Hello friends, welcome to risingpol.com. This is series 5 where we're learning a great deal on polynomials. Today is episode number 10. Friends, today's topic is solving questions on number of zeros of a polynomial using graphs. In the last six episodes, friends, we have been really focusing at risingpearl.com on graphical representation and zeros of linear polynomials, quadratic polynomials, and cubic polynomials. Today we are going to focus on how do we solve questions on this is important to understand friends. We are actually not going to try to find out zeros of a polynomial, but we are going to focus on number of zeros of a polynomial using graphs. And you will see what I mean by this in just a moment. So again, we are not going to be finding out the actual zeros, but we are going to find out how many zeros of polynomial. Now we begin by doing a quick recap of what have we learned so far about number of zeros of a polynomial. Well, first, geometrically speaking, we have seen zero of a polynomial is the x coordinate of the point where graph of the polynomial px it cuts or intersects the x axis. We have seen this over and over again in the last six episodes. Then we have learned that from the graph of any polynomial, what we can say is linear polynomial can have a maximum of one zero. There can be cases where there are no zeros for a linear polynomial, but at most they can have one zero. Similarly, we have seen that a quadratic polynomial can have a maximum of two zeros. That is, it can have zero zeros, one zero, or two zero. And finally, we have seen that a cubic polynomial can have a maximum of three zeros. In other words, whatever is the degree of the polynomial, it can have maximum or at most that many zeros. So if you recall, a linear polynomial is of a degree one, polynomial with degree one, so it can have maximum of one zero. A quadratic polynomial is a polynomial that has a degree of two, so it can have maximum two zeros. A cubic polynomial is of degree three, it can have maximum three zeros. It does not mean that it will always have three zeros or two zeros or one zero. It does mean that it can not have any more zeros than the degree of the polynomial by itself. Now, here friends, what I have done is I'm going to draw some graphs and I'm going to ask you, can you tell how many zeros can that polynomial have? So I have got six graphs here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two of the graphs I have drawn, but the others I'm going to draw with you as we go on in this episode. So how about if I draw something like this? How many zeros do you think this has? Well, this has only one zero. Why? Let, okay, why don't I first draw all the graphs? So let's say we have a line like this. Then we draw something like this. Then we have, let's say, uh, a shape like this, a graph like this. And we have a graph like this. So in this particular, so we have six figures here, right? So let's find out our six, six figures, six graphs. So for this one, how many zeros? We just saw that the zero of a polynomial is the, the point where the graph cuts x-axis. So this graph cuts x-axis over here. By looking at the graph, we know it is a straight line and it will have maximum one zero and this graph cuts x-axis at this point. So we don't know at this right now, what is the zero? Remember, our focus is to find out the number of zeros. So this will have one zero of a polynomial. Whatever this polynomial is, even without knowing the actual polynomial, we can say it cuts x-axis at only one point. So there will be one zero of this polynomial. Similarly here, I have actually tried to draw this line as parallel to the x-axis, but I know that I have drawn it at a slight angle. 
So this will cut x axis at some point like this, right? So this also will have one zero of a polynomial. How about this particular graph? Looking at the graph, we know this is a graph of a parabola. So this is a quadratic polynomial. But right now, the question is not what kind of polynomial is the graph. Question is how many zeros? And answer is this will have zero zeros. That is, there are no zeros for this polynomial. Why? Because clearly looking at the graph, we can say it doesn't cut x-axis. It will never cut x-axis. So there are no zeros for this polynomial. How about this one? Here again, we have a parabola, quadratic polynomial. By looking at the graph, we can say that. And this cuts x-axis at one point and at two points. So we say that this has two zeros of this polynomial because it cuts x-axis at these two points. Similarly, what about this one? Now this, clearly this is not a parabola, it is not a straight line. So this is some sort of a graph. Now, this cuts x-axis at one point, two point, three point. So we can say that this has three zeros for this polynomial. So one, two, three because this graph cuts x-axis at three different points. Similarly, for this graph, this graph cuts x-axis at one point. So we say this has one zero of a polynomial for this particular polynomial. Let's take a look at some more examples. Now, here, and as you can see, friends, I mean, it's really hard to draw the exact parabola. So I have pre-drawn those parabolas. Now, how about if we have, let's try and see if we can draw a parallel line. So imagine this line is parallel to x-axis, right? Let's draw some more graphs. So this time, we draw a graph like this. And here we have a parabola. Now here, let's draw something like this. And over here, let's draw something maybe going like this. So I have again drawn randomly some graphs here, friends. And our goal is not really to find out what is the exact zero of the polynomial, but we are trying to focus on the number of zeros of the polynomial by looking at the graph. Again, recall, friends, that we don't have any other information. Based on the last, last six episodes at Rising Pearl, we are just simply trying to look at the graph of a polynomial and trying to figure out how many zeros can that polynomial have by simply looking at the graph. So like I said, assume this line is parallel to x-axis, then will this line ever cut x-axis or intersect with x-axis? No. So there are zero zeros for this polynomial. How about this one? We can see that this graph cuts x-axis at one point and then at the second point. So there are two zeros for this polynomial. If you look at this graph, it cuts x-axis at one point, two point, third point, and fourth point. So we don't know what is the graph, but we do know because this graph intersects x-axis at one, two, three, four, so there are four zeros of this polynomial. So clearly the degree of this polynomial is more than three, right? So we don't know if it is four for sure or five, but we know it is more than three because if there are three, if the number of zeros are four, right? If the number of zeros, there are four zeros, then the degree has to be at least four or more. It cannot be a degree three. Now here we have a parabola that intersects x-axis at only one point. So there is one zero for this polynomial. And here we have one point where it cuts x-axis, second point, third point. So there are three zeros for this polynomial. And here we have a straight line and it is intersecting x-axis at one point. So there is one zero for this 
polynomial. So friends, I hope that you are kind of following us along and th these last uh, seven videos, including this one, really our focus has been on a graphical representation of linear quadratic cubic polynomials, understanding what is the significance of zeros of these polynomials and how to find out algebraically the the roots or, or I should say the zeros of these polynomials and also by looking at the graphs how we can relate the zeros of these polynomials to the graphs of these polynomials.